So I'm going to start with the Ellen cell types database that's here. So the ultimate goal of the Allen cell types database project is to categorize and organize all cell types and subtypes in the human and the mouse brain, develop complete descriptions and characterizations for every type, and be able to compare across humans and mice. So these cell types are based on what data? The most important to our cell typing is transcriptomics data. That's RNA sequencing right here. I'll come back to that in a moment. We have a couple of different variants on that technique. We also collect electrophysiology. Uh, we run the cells through a standardized set of stimuli and record their responses. And we get morphological reconstructions of some cells in three dimensions, so we get their shape. Most of our data to date has been divided into two streams. The EFIS and morphology go one way and the transcriptomics go the other way. So I'm gonna start with the transcriptomics. This is the bulk of our focus and also the larger fraction of our data. We have tens of thousands of individual cells here. So we have multiple data sets um, from mouse whole brain, whole cortex, um, and from human from selected brain regions, mostly from post-mortem donations. We have single cell RNA sequencing for mouse and single nucleus RNA sequencing for the human of the whole genome for both species. Um, and using our transcriptomic browsers online, give this a second to load, we have pre-sorted these cells as defined by a handful of marker genes whose expression is by default loaded here um, that we have found through our research contribute to differentiating cell types from each other. But you can use this add genes button up at the top here to add any additional genes to this view. We've just preloaded it with this 15 or so genes that are most important to being able to differentiate these 150 or so cell types. So how do you read this graph? So the top here is this dendrogram that shows all of the cell types and their relation to each other. So the first branching point is uh, non-neuronal cells versus neuronal cells. So we have glia uh, characterized over here, and then the bulk of the cell types are neurons. And then the first break point within the neuron category is GABAergic versus glutamatergic cells. And then within that, we have all of these types and subtypes within those main categories. Um, so each of these columns represents one cell type, and then each row here represents one gene, and the color is telling you the average uh, expression level of that gene across all of the cells that fall into that cell type. Um, and you can get the sample sizes here by looking at the sampling strategy box. Um, so again, we have, we have de determined through our research that these are the genes that most contribute to distinguishing cell types from each other. You can see how that was done uh, in part using this scatter plot uh, where each color represents one uh, cell type. And you can see that, they, that we have been able to cluster them so that cells that are more like each other are falling similar to each other on this plot. So this plot represents tens of thousands of cells. Um, and our online viewer helps you explore them and get oriented, but you can download all of the data from here, download data down in the lower corner. Or if you go back to this homepage here, we have information on how to download. It goes uh, to each of these different uh, data sets. Um, you can go in and you can download all of this information about the cell types, the gene expression, the metadata, um, and it's also all accessible via our API. Um, and you can interact with it using our SDK for analysis beyond what you can do in this online viewer. Um, and the transcriptomics data is going to be the subject of a more in-depth tutorial in March. Um, Christina is going to drop the link in the chat so you can see uh, more about how this data was collected and how and why it's useful. So that is what I'm going to cover on the transcriptomics data. So I'm going back to our cell types homepage. This is where I got to by clicking that circle on the uh, landing page back home. And I'm going to show you our electrophysiology and morphology data. That's on our cell feature search is where most of that data lives. Um, so this is for a smaller number of cells than the transcriptomics data, where we again have tens of thousands of individual cells. Um, for this smaller number of cells, we are uh, measuring their electrophysiological responses to some standard stimuli. That's uh, patch clamp. And we create 3D reconstructions of some of those cells as well. So I'm just going to pick a random cell here. 
We've historically done this for a smaller separate set of cells from the transcriptomics and these cells come from living tissue that is donated by local neurosurgeons and their patients. So the regions that we get are dependent on surgical need. Um, so this represents a smaller subregion of especially the human tissue that we have this living, um, living human tissue that we get. Um, this was not uh, wrote in the lab. So in the realm, oh, uh, sorry, I wanted to show you this first before I move on. Um, so in our electrophysiology data, uh, what we have is the stimulus that was put into the cell and then we have the cell response. Each uh, color represents one sweep and the stimulus and the cell's response. We've pre-calculated some, uh, some basic uh, characteristics of this cell that would be useful for a lot of uses. And you can also view this cell, um, both what it looked like and its reconstruction. Again, this is available for a smaller number of cells than the transcriptomic data. Um, and, uh, but we're still using it to develop cell types. So in the realms of all three of these, we use the open data to define the cell types that were the, the, like the ones that you see at the top of that RNA-seq dendrogram. Um, and we also publish all of our analysis tools on GitHub. So you can see how we've clustered our cells into types and compare our types to your own and use our clustering on your own data.